Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we're going to be doing a review for Robots in Disguise Galvatronus. He is a combiner that's composed of the Decepticons Cyclonus, Cyberwarp, Skyjack, Treadshock, and Riot Gear. So we're going to go ahead and look at each component on its own, combine them, get a look at that thing, and then share our thoughts. Start with the leader of the group, Cyclonus. The vehicle mode is this purple spaceship. Comes with this rifle that attaches to the top there, which can be removed if you don't want it. Uh, this is the only pre-existing character in the lineup. All the others are have been made up, you know, just for this combiner team. So, as such, Cyclonus channels his uh, original design in this new version. You know, he's got all the purple down, the spikiness. Well, simple vehicle mode, but it works. This is Cyclonus's robot mode. It looks very much like the uh, classic depiction of the character. Let's see here, he's got his uh, typical split cone head design there. He does suffer the same issue that uh, Combiner Force Motormaster has, that he doesn't have proper hands. Just kind of has nubs there. His wings, they can, you know, rotate back if you want them to, but keeping them out to the side keeps them somewhat animation accurate. He has a very deep purple color, which is pretty typical for that character. Uh, in the TV show, he's much more blue, so I'm not sure why they decided to go with purple vice the blue, you know, when the change was made, but yeah, there's that bit of a discrepancy there. Uh, one issue that this guy has is that he has no form of like heel support in the back here, so he's very prone to just falling backwards, especially if you have his wings pointing back because it just makes him even more back heavy. So definitely something to be aware of. Unlike Motormaster, Cyclonus doesn't have anywhere that you can store his uh, big rifle. He can't hold it, doesn't plug onto his back or anything. We're going to move on to Cyberwarp and Skyjack. Turn into these small little space cruiser type vehicles with what looks like turbines here on the sides. Uh, they use pretty much the exact same mold. Only difference is the robot heads that you'll see in a moment. Uh, they do have a bit of a an odd color swap going on. The Their package art and even their animation models in the show depict Cyberwarp as having yellow accents while Skyjack has green. Uh, on the toys, these got swapped. And not a whole lot you can do about that. It would take some real care and ingenuity to swap their heads because they're attached with pins. So if you want to take the risk, you know, by all means go for it. But I'm not going to risk damaging them for that. Not a big detail in my opinion. We have the robot modes here. Just like any other limb bots for the Combiner Force line, the, these are very simplistic figures. They're about on par with like Legion class. Uh, you can see the difference in their head sculpts there. Um, some of the better looking limb bots for this line, I think. They do actually have like articulated arms, which is a nice change. We've got our two ground vehicles, Tread Shock and Riot Gear. Turn to simple cars. Their wheels do roll, but they don't seem to roll on these surfaces very well. Could just be my table. Maybe it's too smooth for them to get the necessary uh, traction there. These are their robot modes. Just like most of the other car bots from this subset, their transformation consists of just flipping their arms out to their sides and standing them up. Not very creative. Uh, just like the two flyers, 
These use the same molds, only difference being their robot heads here. So not a lot to see here. Uh, luckily, what they lack in any sort of like posability or interesting uh, transformation, they do make up for with um, just kind of some general bulkiness. They look solid, despite the fact that they barely do anything. Before we combine them, we'll get a nice little group shot of the team in their robot modes. Just to see what they look like standing together. Uh, this team definitely color coordinates better than the other two. They don't have this clashing of radically different colors. You know, this team was designed to work well together. Finally, we have Galvatronus in his combined form. Uh, he is very nice looking for, you know, the simple combiner that he is. One big departure from his Combiner Wars counterpart is that instead of resembling Galvatron in his Gestalt mode, he just looks like a beefed up version of Cyclonus. Uh, does something a little different with the hands. They're more stylized. They don't just look like plain fists. You can see him holding his big rifle here. Uh, his arms can rotate up and down. Though, in order to do so, you do have to untab his wings from his back. Uh, he does have angle tilt. And his legs can swing in and out there. So, yeah. I mean, if you've seen one of the other combiner teams from this line, you've, you know, not really any surprises here. I think, uh... Visually, he is my favorite out of the three that they've done. He just looks very cool. He just kind of exudes that Decepticon look with all the purple and the blues. Nice and wide and bulky looking. Has a good back profile. It's not all kibbly. And, you know, he just kind of does what he does well. He doesn't seem to have anywhere to actually store his rifle in his combiner mode, which is a shame. You know, he's just kind of stuck holding it. One issue I found with this figure is that the way his little shoulder assemblies go together, it's a very loose connection, so any amount of, like, moving it around, they just kind of pop out. There's nothing, nothing really solidly holding them in place. So just be aware of that. You know, if you play with this thing, it is going to be floppy. So final thoughts on Galvatronus. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I think he is my favorite of the three combiners that this toy line produced. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't give him a more unique combiner head. You know, they just kind of recycled the Cyclonus design. And, you know, the whole shoulders popping out thing, lack of a weapon storage for his robot or combiner modes is a big shame definitely loses points for that so i can't say that he is just objectively the best combiner i like him the most but he does have his flaws so whether or not you're willing to look past those to you know want to pick this guy up he costs the same as the other combiners so you know that you're getting not a whole lot but paying a fair amount so yeah i'll leave that up to you to decide if he's worth your purchase i am happy i got him you know he'll look good up next to the other two combiners in the line. And with that, I'm going to put an end to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any comments letting me know what you think of the figures, what you think of the review, and I will see you all next time.